and I'm going to talk a little bit about prayer at home. So we lead such busy lives today. We're, we're busy doing all sorts of things. Parents are working, children are busy at school, they have after school clubs, they have homework, they have all sorts of different things going on all the time. And it can feel sometimes like we just don't have time to pray. We don't have time to fit that in. By the time it's bedtime, we're exhausted. And then in the morning, we're straight up and out. Sometimes as well, with prayer, it can feel like perhaps it's a little bit meaningless. When, there, when we have so many set prayers to learn, and they all obviously have their part um, for us to take part in the, the liturgy and the mass, but when we're using that prayer at home as well, sometimes if we're just repeating it, it can feel a bit removed from us, a bit meaningless sometimes. There perhaps might also be a temptation to think that children are learning to pray in school. So through their RE lessons, they'll be doing things to do about what prayer is, how to learn the prayers. And so we can think, well, actually that's covered at school as well. So we don't need to. But I think if we view prayer that way, we're perhaps missing out on an opportunity. And what it is really is as parents, it's an opportunity for us to be with our children, to teach them some valuable skills, some life lessons. But also, if you think about what prayer really is, it's about connection with God. It's about trying to communicate with God. And when we see it in that way, we can see that actually, taking a little bit of time, whether it's just at bedtime or in the morning, whichever suits, just to spend a few moments with our children, really trying to think about connecting with God and with each other. So perhaps the best way to always start is, as Pope Francis reminds us, is to start with the sign of the cross, one of the most important prayers. And it just kind of marks out that we're starting our prayers now. And then if we take, if it is at the end of the day, if we take a few minutes to think back over the, how the day has gone, so we can think to ourselves, what went really well today? What are we really thankful for? What was nice about today? It might be an achievement that's happened. It might just be in trying something, giving a lot of effort to something. It could be about friendships, being kind to others. It could be anything. And then also taking a little bit of time to think, well, what didn't go quite so well today? Maybe something that actually perhaps we're sorry for, something that we didn't feel too good about, or maybe something else has happened that wasn't so nice today. And that can be good to talk about that. And then also thinking, what do we hope for for others and for ourselves? Is there something that we need to think about in terms of hoping for something that might be kind of best for other people. For example, with, with our children, what we sometimes do is think, oh, well, you know, look at, you know, you're tucked up in your nice warm bed. Um, you know, what about the children that haven't got that? And our children are four and seven, so, you know, they're kind of very young, but really do connect with that. Really kind of, it helps them to really visualize and imagine what it might be like to not have those nice things. Pope Francis tells us a really good way, he advises us a way that we can pray with children that can be really useful and quite easy to remember. And that's the, the five finger prayer. So what we do is we, we think about the five digits and we think, right, well, this one, the thumb, it's the closest to us. So let's think about our family, those closest to us and pray for them. This one is um, the one where we're thinking about teachers. So teachers guide us, they show us the way to go, and we need to pray for our teachers that they continue to help us in the best way. This one is the tallest, so we can think of our leaders, the government, the authorities, the people who are kind of, you know, in charge of so much, hoping that they pray, uh, we're praying for them, that they kind of uh, do the best for everybody, the common good for everyone. And then this is actually our weakest finger, so this one, we're thinking about other people, people who don't have the same things that we do. And then finally, this little one is about praying for ourselves. So if we think about whether it's using the five fingers or whether it's just thinking about how the day has gone, looking back over it, what we're really doing there is trying to increase that sense of connection. And it's just like with our friendships or with our relatives. If we, if we see them regularly, if we talk to them regularly, it helps us to kind of keep that bond between us 
And really that's what we're trying to do when we're encouraging children to pray, is to maintain that relationship and that love for God. So here are the questions.